Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of FTB Skies Expert. In this episode, we obtain creative flight through Ars Nouveau, make a system that produces better fuel and automates TNT production, as well as obtaining our first laser node from Laser.io. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Okay, folks, first thing I want to go over and cover is, um, as you can see, I have a new skin. Uh, this was graciously made for me by Blossom over on Fiverr. Uh, I commissioned them to make this skin for me, so big uh, appreciation for that. And everything along those lines, I'm going to be throwing their page up. So if you like the skin and want something similar, you can go check them out and see if you know, give them some business or just tell them I said hey or whatnot for uh, the skin. But also, uh, this account that I'm on is a new account, right? So you're going to be seeing some repeated like achievements and stuff for certain things. Um, just giving a little clarification there uh, in case you see that and whatnot. So that way we don't... Uh, have any confusion but yeah we're on a new account and everything uh we were able to transfer all the items and everything so that is nice and no problems there so i want to get started here with something that i probably should have done a while ago uh being said but we need to firstly get us some source right and this is going to be nice now that we have that source set up uh, under, underneath here, right? But if we chuck this down here, this ritual brazier, and let me uh, break all these real quick, just so that way we don't have anything in our way. And we use this Tablet of Summon Wilden, right? Which is crafted like this. It's very simple. And we uh, throw this down on here. This is going to summon some enemies for us to fight. And when we do this, it's going to let us kill them all and everything. And what we're after is these Wilden Wings. We're going to fight this uh, a couple more times because I think... Yeah. Uh, actually, we can use... I went ahead because I want to start up Hostile Neural Networks. Right, so we can actually grab this model framework here. And let me throw slot deep learner. Is that slot taken up by something? Hmm. When held and models are within. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do one of those rituals real quick again. Ritual. A wilden. And we just have to craft a couple things. No big deal. No string, really. Uh, we'll go grab some over here. Should have... Not a ton, but... Some. Enough for what we're going to be doing. And so... Let's do that. Let's get a bow. And we'll also chuck some of these other items away for the time being. But we'll get a couple of bows. Like so. And then we'll get Wilden. And then grab two more of these, right? And so we should be able to throw this one here. And then do this. And then we able to... Yeah, Wilden Data Module, there we go. And then we throw this guy in here. Right. Start learning this. And we kill all these fellas. Like so. We only need one more. 
uh, in our prediction. So we'll summon another one really quick with this. Uh, oh, actually, wait. Was that enough? Okay, yeah. So we have the basic module now, right? Which if we go to hostile and then we go to the simulation chamber, we should be able to make one of these, right? And then a loot fabricator is just one of these fellows. We just need some netherite. But these two things right here. So we should be able to hook these up to some power and I'm going to have to uh, really quickly turn this guy off because we're cooking a lot of dash so it's eating up all our power. I also wanted to quickly note that I've redone some things over here. Um, I've expanded our, our magnets and whatnot and our wheels by two more. You know, I took the time to process these and get two more. And as you can see, things are a little different over here. Uh, we have four of these advanced diesel generators now. Um, so apparently there was like the ones that were here, right? Um, we're telling our stress network that we had like over like a million stress capacity or something. And that just, it didn't sound right to me. So I broke them and quickly discovered that yeah it was like bugged or something like I'm not sure I know that uh, when testing there was some issues with these uh, generators and everything so that should be fixed now as you can see uh, we're not getting any we out of diesel here no where is it all going I redid some things underneath here, so I might have broken something. Yeah, I did. Uh, let's get a mechanical pipe really quick. So, there we go. That should get these running again. Yeah, and as you can see right now, our stress capacity is 294,000 with four of these going. So, that's a lot more along the lines of what this should be and everything. So, yeah, that's nice. But now that we got some power going again... Uh, we'll probably just throw just this basic setup here down for the moment, right? And you just plug these up to some power. And then you grab your theta module out of here. And you place it in here. And then we need some prediction matrices. Right? So if we look up... I already made some of these, but I'll show you how to quickly make some. It's just uh, glass panes and then an iron plate, gold plate, and a piece of clay in the middle. And you get 16. Um, but we'll come over here. Chuck some of these guys in. And yeah, there we go. So as you can see now, it's running this. Um, it will cycle through this. And basically, every single time it completes one of these cycles, it will essentially like it'll it'll do a couple of things right so as you can see this is like one of 48 right and when these upgrade right it'll give like a better it gives like a higher chance of these predictions right which is what we want because then we can come over here and select the item we want and then this gives us 16 of these guys and you can also use these generalized overworld things for certain items. Like we can use them for cobwebs or, you know, just all types of stuff. And you can do this for a lot of mobs. I think actually somebody commented about doing this with the, uh, with the afferent to get the afferent essence. And I'm going to have to look into that because that might be worth it. But we'll let that continue to go for the time being. And in the meantime... We are going to pop up here and we are going to get some of these tablets of flight, right? And I'm going to want a couple of these for throughout the base. And I'm going to grab some source jars too. And basically what we can do with these is I'll set one up here right next to our main source thing but if we activate this 
right? And it has source. We should be able to, let me take my leecher off. Yeah, we should be able to like creatively fly now. I'm guessing not for the time being. I guess if we ever need them, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. But yeah, so now we have creative flight, which is nice. We're just going to make things a lot easier to navigate around the base. I kind of want to get a, a better fuel source going so that we can increase our stress capacity. So one of the things I'm going to need is the linking tool because I need to check something really quick. I need to see if this uh, pedestal is going to be able to link to... No, I did that right on the edge. So, for this, what I should do, I could technically put this here, right? And I'm going to break this pedestal for the time being, put him here with this, and then we'll, um, backwards linking tool, I think is the one we want. We'll connect sender to here. Right, and we should see... Oh, wait, this is the refinery. It's the wrong machine. We need the uh, thermopneumatic. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, this guy is now getting uh, force gems, and we need to hook him up with some pressure like that. Okay, and you're getting pressure now, which is very nice. But what I want to do now is I want to pull this guy off of here for the time being because we have 3 million crude oil in there. And what I want to do is set this up so that this is going into here. And what this is going to do is pump oil into here, crude oil and turn it into force infused oil, right? Now, with the force infused oil, what we can do with that, if I do this real quick, we can um, set up, actually, I need, to re I need to reconfigure this a little bit. I should have this on this side with something like this, right? Uh, so now we need a refinery, right, with some outputs on it, like so. Okay, and then we will pull this out like that, right, and this is uh, over 100. And then this gives us force-infused diesel, right, which we will build up here. And then we want to slowly but surely pump that into our system, right? Like so. So we'll disconnect this. I did not want that to go in there. I wanted that. Um, okay, we'll do this. Where's our wrench? There we go. Just something like this. And then... Yeah, there we go. Force infused diesel. Okay. And then I'm thinking that the, I know, so I know that the liquid sulfuric gas, right? We look at that real quick. Sulfuric gas. We look at this, we can see that this is used for sulfuric gas, which then, now there was something that this is used for. That I'm blanking on right now. Uh, I don't think. Was it this? Was it the. Was it the toyoline or whatever it's called? This might have been it. With the blast chiller and then using this. Okay, yeah, this is what it was. So with this, we can set up. With this same setup, we can set up a method to essentially automate TNT production, right? Which is going to be crucial for us because we're going to want to 
we're essentially going to want to, what's it called? Automate TNT for the future. Because if we look at TNT and we look at uses of this, we can see this guy right here called the implosion compressor, which is going to be a much more efficient way for us to turn our dash ingots into dash plates. Because right now we need nine ingots to just make one dash plate, which is like really not ideal. So let's do that. We'll make a blast chiller just so that way this can all keep processing and we just need a little bit of invar. We're gonna make some gears. And then what else do we need? Blast chiller. We need uh, one of these and then packed ice. How do we get ice again? Or I thought when I came from the moon, I thought I brought a lot of those home. Yeah, I did. So let's take this. And then can we just crush these 18 of it to make uh, our two packed ice blocks? And then if we look at our chiller. The ball cast needs bronze, which that shouldn't be too difficult to make. I think we actually have some bronze already. Yeah, we definitely do. I'll go ahead and get that turned into plates. Okay. And then blast chiller like that and then we have some flux i thought we had some more of these i guess i made just the exact amount for what i was doing but we're probably going to want some of these flux linkage amplifiers so that way it'll run faster and do we have we don't have electrum plated up already but i know we have more electrum okay folks I'm back and we should have everything now that we need to kind of set this up. So if we pop one up over here, uh, the only thing I forgot is the pressurized tubing. Let's do that real quick. Because we are gonna need to hook up another thermo pneumatic uh, processor, processing plant or whatever. So we'll probably need to be smart about this now so let's do this uses the if we look at this real quick let's actually go to this recipe this uses the toline which is right there so we will pull this out here like so and then put you into our blast chiller We'll send an input on the top there with the ball cast. And then we'll start. Oh, don't do that, please. Uh, okay, yeah. Pull you out of there. So now you should be full. And we need to get power to this guy, but that's not really a big, big issue. And then I wonder if this will auto output to you. Because if you do, that's very nice. And we'll break you real quick so we can get some pressure over towards you. Okay. And you're also going to need the sulfuric, the liquid sulfuric gas. So let's actually, now that we have you set up you actually shouldn't no you're gonna connect let's go ahead and pull you out so you have liquid sulfuric gas nope not literally not what i was trying to do that was the opposite of what i was trying to do yeah so you're getting liquid sulfuric gas now and then i'm gonna put a drawer here with a polar upgrade from the west and then we'll throw these storage ones in here for the time being we'll lock you and now we just need to get power to our fella over here so let me go grab some some power uh cables some universal cables if we have any universal yeah we do and we will 
now. Uh, honestly, now that I can, I'll probably start hooking things up from the bottom, power-wise. So we'll maybe start. We'll maybe start that uh over here with a power line going underneath, just to keep things kind of separated. Because the overhead look is not great. I mean, this whole base doesn't look great at the current moment. I think I said it last episode, but I really need to get um just a day where I just uh reorganize the entire base. And the more progression I do without doing that, it kind of just gets worse. But that's uh, something we'll have to cross eventually. Let's look here. Okay, you're working. And let's throw in these, so that way you can process this super quickly. And you're not getting... Okay, interesting. Liquid sulfuric acid. Mmm. Hold on. Sulfuric. Liquid sulfuric gas. Liquid sulfuric acid. Needs... Okay, folks, so I've looked into it a little bit, and this seems like a little bit more of an involved process with mechanism, but it's also something that we are capable of doing. So I'm going to kind of work on this, right? And I'm kind of trying to do this based off of just how I know it. But essentially, this is going to take uh, the sulfuric acid that gets made here, right? from this chemical infuser correct so we want uh, i'm pretty sure yeah this is going to be we want gas to be output and then we'll clear all the other inputs on it for the time being uh we'll clear side configs right and we'll say that will be output okay and we're gonna want for this sulfuric acid let me just add that so we're gonna need sulfur trioxide and water vapor right and water vapor is pretty easy to get it just requires it just requires what's it called um, a rotary can condensator right so we'll clear all the config on you real quick just so that way we don't have any misunderstanding Right, and we want the front of the gas to be an output, right? And we'll have the back be an input, right? So then we'll put our, we'll do a little water setup here with some aqueous accumulators. Like so, we should see that going now. And we'll get some mechanical piping and we'll pump that out. And we should see that if we toggle the operation, we also need to give these uh, power. So let me remember to do that. That way we don't have any issues here. But that's the chemical infuser, so that means this guy's here. Pull you down and pop you all the way over to here. Okay. Right, uh, you're making water vapor, right? So now we want the back of this gases. No, don't do that. We want the back of this to be an input two for orange, right? And let me also get the dropper because that'll probably help with what we're doing here. Uh, dropper. There it is. Gauge dropper. Okay. And we'll simply just pick you up and then pour you into... I thought it was... Yeah, you right-click. Okay. So this has water vapor going into it now, right? Which is half of the... Uh, half of the... The thing here, okay? Now, we need to make sulfur trioxide, which needs oxygen and sulfur dioxide. And the way we get oxygen 
is with an electrolytic separator, right? Which, yeah, here we have this. So I will set this guy up here, right? And we needed, um, all right, everyone. Now that we have that second chemical infuser, we're going to plop this guy down right here. And we're going to set the gas to output on the left side. Uh, input one, the dark red on the right side, and then input two on the back side or the orange, right? And this is going to allow for this electrolytic separator back here to be able to pull off. Let's see here. Uh, let's clear the config on this guy real quick. And we'll take a mechanical pipe here, pump some fluid into that, and then we'll run some more power connectors for the time being, like so. Okay, and we should be seeing hydrogen now is being produced. So we want output one to come out the front. Yeah, like so. Okay, and hydrogen is going into there now. And we want to make sure that this is getting dumped via excess. Or actually, wait, I needed the oxygen, not the hydrogen. My bad. So let's switch this real quick to uh, output two. Right, and then we will uh, really quickly grab this gauge dropper here. Get all that out of there. Empty you out. All right. And now the last step in this process should be, if I've done this correctly, should now be uh, throwing a universal cable down here with a rotary, or no, not a rotary condensator, a chemical oxidizer. That's what it is, right? And we'll clear... Or we can have that output on the left. Yeah. So now we just throw... We need sulfur dust. Right? Which we definitely have. Let's just grab some of that real quick. And maybe setting up a system to just automatically turn this into... Turn some sulfur ore into sulfur dust wouldn't be a bad idea. But this comes in here. Turns into sulfur trioxide. And then let's set this up to where the right side is input one, right? And then this turns into sulfuric acid, which is going in here, right? And we actually don't have a power connector on you. So we'll plop you down like so. And then now it's being turned into liquid sulfuric acid, which if we say fluids we want to come out the top or that's a universal cable not a mechanical pipe so let's fix that real quick we can see that our liquid sulf sulfuric acid is going in there and we need to disconnect you because oh my goodness hey when it does that okay and then yeah now we should see and T being produced which is very nice and then temperature 2000 I wonder why the temperature is fluctuating so much so every single time it makes TNT it just heats up really and then this puller upgrade doesn't appear to be working oh, from the east. Okay, there we go. So now that's just making TNT for us, which is very nice for what we're doing. Um, not too bad of a setup. It was a little involved, but as you can see, this is all just going to run now. And then as long as we provide it with sulfur, it should always, it should always be a, uh, be running let's see what do we need for a 
Hmm. Yeah, we're just going to use a pulverizer because that's not as hard to make. Nor is it as hard to upgrade. And then we'll get a drawer with uh, some sulfur above this. And we'll just set you to output to the left. Input from the top. And we'll set the item input from the right. And we'll connect you down here with a universal so you get power. And then this should theoretically work if it's done correctly. This should turn to sulfur dust, hopefully. Yeah, it did. Okay, sweet. So now let's just load this up with a bunch of sulfur. Uh, we have a ton at the current moment. Probably not going to even go through that this fast because it's uh, it's using this up a lot quicker than it can make this. But that is very nice. Um, we're not getting more of this produced because this is still running out and whatnot. But hopefully that's something we can, uh, we'll just have to wait a little bit and then it'll sort itself out. Okay, folks. And then there's just one other thing that I want to do before we finish up this episode. And that's make an inscriber, right? Which is going to need some steel from us. We have that downstairs, actually. Um, we'll grab some Certus. What else do we need from an inscriber? Uh, two sticky pistons and a copper and then just the steel and we're doing this so that way we can craft up hopefully some of the laser nodes from laser io which will not only be handy but will also be integral 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 i think is the word i'm looking for uh, to some of the things we're doing. Let me do this real quick. And then... I think it was... Sticky Piston there. Sticky Piston here. Alright, we'll pop these out of here. Ugh. Kind of made the system a little... A little scuffed here. By doing it this way but it's compressed iron okay and then we needed a copper there and then a certus there right and then yeah that crafts into an inscriber from applied energistics right and then with this inscriber we can do a couple of different things um the main one being I think for laser IO, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. We need this laser, or we need these logic chips, right? Which needs a dash processor, which is a dash plate. So we can do that. We just have to uh, do this real quick. And we also needed, um, what was the dash? The dash processor, dash. I think it also needed yeah this conductive solder which is redstone redstone tin and copper tin and copper like so okay and we just throw this into our induction smelter like so and that produces that up where is our forget where our multi-server press is right there this guy will work pretty quickly make us a dash plate and we'll grab some of this out of here and then we needed a printed silicone which we do have extra of so let's do that um oh we have them in our inventory already okay sweet so i think we just give this guy a little bit of power and then yeah so we just do something like this 
with a dash and then that in the middle. And then this guy gets started on what we're doing. Turns into a dash processor, which if we then throw this into our assembler, should turn into eight of those logic chips. Okay. And then there's just eight of them. And then you just smelt these for what we're doing. For the purpose of what we're doing. This guy keeps breaking in between. Uh, every single time I log off, it breaks. Which is really strange. Uh, like, just get this out of here. I don't care. But we'll throw eight of you there. And that should take no time to smell at all. Should be fairly quick. You can see this is full of iron. The current moment. But yeah, there, there they go. Nope, don't do that. Uh, logic chips. And then these can be used for a multitude of things. The one that we want is the laser connector. And then eventually the laser node from laser IO. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's this quest right here and everything. And um, our quantum assembler, which is probably going to be the next thing we work towards, is going to need. Or no, I'm thinking of the. I'm thinking of the TNT. Uh, what's it called? The implosion. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, this is the one that needs uh, all the different, this needs the laser node, and then it also needs a 21 dynamic tanks and then lumium glass, which I'm pretty sure we've made before. Pretty sure that's not too difficult to obtain. Yeah, lumium is, is fairly easy to get at this point. So we'll probably be working on that next episode. Um, that way we can get dash being produced in a more efficient manner, but this is kind of a nice little TNT automation, and we also have some better fuel going now, which is super cool. We got the creative flight, so that's super neat. It's going to allow us to do things a lot quicker around the base, and with the setup we have here, we're, we're never going to have to worry about it running out of source or anything like that. And yeah, this is just pretty good for what I'm thinking of for today's episode. Um, we can see that these guys have built up a, a stock, a back stock, which is always very nice. And everything like that. Just because we haven't used more of that. But yeah, folks, that's probably where I'm going to end things today. Uh, as always, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the next one. And uh, as always, folks, I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you later. Peace. Thank you.